What's up guys, my name is Tony, and today I'm going to give you a quick and painless guide on installing and configuring Mango WC. Mango WC is a Wayland compositor inspired by DWL but turned into something much greater. It has adopted new features such as vertical and horizontal scrolling layouts, scratchpad functionality, overviews, and much more. It has a separation of tags and workspaces and the ability to implement combo views which are huge for many users. To quote the developer here, Mango is as lightweight as DWL and can be built completely within a few seconds. Despite this, Mango does not compromise on functionality. If you're somebody who's coming over from DWM and looking to explore the Wayland side of things, Mango is a great option for you. And one of my subscribers, Argos Nothing, has created a very well documented DWM to Mango implementation process, as well as a great overview of some of the features here that I'm gonna go over today with Mango WC. More on this later. All right, let's jump right into the installation. And today I'm using Arch Linux, by the way, but this is gonna work on NixOS, Gen2, Slackware, etc. I will leave installation instructions for several distributions in a written guide in a link below the subscribe button. On Arch Linux today, we are going to use the AUR to grab Mango WC for all of its dependencies. And the requirements for Mango WC are all included in this AUR package created by the developer and listed here. However, there is some extra stuff that we're gonna need for my personal setup. And we'll go ahead and install all that stuff right now. So I am gonna open up a terminal here and I'm going to type yay-s mango wc-git. And as you can see, I already have it installed and the build file exists here for me on my end. But for you guys, you can go ahead and select mango wc git and just proceed with the installation. And there we go. So all of the dependencies should now be installed and we can do a quick sanity check. Let's take a look at pacman-qs and let's look for glibc, we've got that. Let's look for mason, we've got that. One more sanity check, let's look at ninja and yeah, there we go, we've got it all. So we can clear that and move on to the personal stuff. And that is gonna be the dependencies that I listed for my personal setup, which are gonna be the terminal emulator, which is foot, WL clipboard, which is a X clip port to Wayland. So we can take screenshots with Grim and Slurp. And before you comment below, Link Arzu, yes, these are real package names. And we're gonna use Sway BG to set the wallpaper. And this is a minimal port of something like X wallpaper over here to the Wayland side of things. For the browser, it's gonna be your choice. I'm gonna use Firefox with the Arkenfox user.js. And then for the font here, I've got the TTF JetBrains Mono Nerd as always. So let's go ahead and hit enter. And as you can see, I already have all of these installed. And I think the big one here is Firefox. That's why it's 488 megabytes or possibly the JetBrains font. But for you guys, go ahead and install those. And we're ready to immediately move into the Mango configuration file. So we've installed Mango and we are ready to jump into it. So we can go ahead and just jump out of X here. And we can jump into Mango here by just literally typing Mango. And as you can see here, we're in Mango. It is just a blank screen with a mouse cursor, which is super minimal. So let's open up a terminal here. The default bind to open up a terminal is gonna be Alt Enter, and that is gonna be the foot terminal. So the first thing I wanna do is open up the config file, change a few key binds, and add a W menu script. So let's go ahead and open up that config file here. We're gonna do vim.config mango config.conf. And as we see here, we've got a lot of options. The config file is 256 lines. So let's not get overwhelmed. Let's just change what we need. So I'm gonna search for foot here, because that's the terminal. And we see it's alt return. Let's go ahead and change that to super return. And then for Rofi, we're not using Rofi. We are using W menu. So let's change that to super D. And instead of spawning Rofi here, let's spawn W menu run dash L 10 for a vertical list. Let's make sure we didn't overwrite any keybinds here. We'll search for super D and that is the only spot I see that there. Let's also search for super return and that looks good too. So we've added two keybinds and let's change one more here. The kill client is gonna be super Q for me and that's what I'm used to on all of my other window managers. Let's also search that too, super Q. Also looks clean, so just changed three keybinds here. 
We'll save that file. And we can reload the file here without exiting Mango, which is a pretty good feature, I think. So if we search for reload, we're gonna see this bind to reload the Mango config file. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change that bind from super R to super shift R. And then I'll go ahead and search one more time super shift R and it looks like that's the only occurrence. So we're okay with that. So I've changed four binds here. I'm ready to reload the config. And remember the original bind was super R. So I'm gonna hit that button now, super R. Now I hit super enter and that already opens up a terminal and super Q closes it. So we're already in a good spot. And this is nice, but we, we can do better. I personally could get by just like this with no bar, but let's go ahead and add one. So we're gonna go ahead and add some custom binds for movements and what have you later. But for now, let's move on to the bar. Before I move on to the bar, I encourage you to play around with that file and add change your binds as needed. And a great place to start, especially if you're coming over from DWM, is to check out Argos Nothing's article about this on my website here. He provided a ton of information about how to set up Mango, what it has to offer, and how to convert yourself from DWM to Mango. He gave a pretty good example here of what you can do with Mango with combo view and grid layout. And he provided a link directly to his Mango DWM config starter kit here, which in his words here, it is meant to provide a sensible Mango default for DWM users. So I do want to thank Argos Nothing here for contributing a lot to my community, but also the Mango community and sharing a ton of information on how you can use Mango to its full potential. So we're going to go ahead and move on to setting up Waybar here. So the file structure for the config directory is going to be pretty simple today. We are going to use an auto start.sh file, a config.conf, and then waybars, configs, and style.css. So I already made a video about waybar. I'm going to just clone my waybar config and put it into this directory. If you need guidance on customizing waybar, I encourage you to check out that video. So now that I've cloned my waybar configuration, I'm just gonna copy those waybar files into that directory. So we'll do cp waybar star, and we're gonna copy them into dot config slash mango. So if we run tree on that folder, now we see we've got the config, the JSON and the style for waybar. So let's go ahead and add an auto start dot sh file. So we'll do vim dot config mango auto start dot sh. And in here, we're literally just gonna have one line for now. It's gonna be waybar dash c to specify where the config is. And that for me is gonna be the full path dot config mango config dot json. And then we're also gonna specify this style here with dash s dot config mango style dot css. We'll output that to dev null. All right, let's save that. And we can test what this command is gonna do here. Let's quit this here and let's just run it in the terminal. And there you go. You see the waybar right there. So. This is my waybar configuration. It looks like there is a battery widget that's missing, so we can go ahead and clean that up. But other than that, it works out of the box here. So we'll go ahead and go to tag two. Looks good. Let's open up something on tag four. And we see that tag three and four are occupied, but not active. And then the rest are not occupied at all. You can see that because they're white. And the purple underline is an indicator of the tag being active. So let's go ahead and set up a wallpaper. So with the wallpaper here, I'm gonna use sway bg. So I'll do sway bg dash i walls wall four dot jpeg and disown here so that I can click the terminal and show that. And that's the wallpaper we're gonna go with today. It's kind of got the Lisa and Algaib vibes here, but we wanna put that in the auto start dot sh file. So let's actually reopen that here. So we're gonna do the same thing here. Sway bg dash i walls wall four dot jpeg I'll put that to dev null. So the auto start is complete. The waybar situation is complete. So let's go ahead and make that auto start script executable and then we can restart Mango. All right, so we've launched Mango here and we do have access to that wallpaper now and our waybar is working. So now it's time to kind of go over my keybinds and really the power of Mango WC here, at least for my use case. So let's jump into that. So right off the bat, we see there's animations here. 
What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open a few terminals here and show you guys the separate layouts here. So I'm gonna go ahead and use Figlet here to show you what terminals are what. So the very first thing you can definitely notice here is just like DWM, you can go through the master in the stack with J and K here, uh, but you can also do it with H and L positionally. So H and L will go left and right, J and K would normally go up and down. Let's open up another terminal here. It's gonna be terminal four. And let's swap to the vertical grid here. Super V is gonna put us in vertical grid mode. And now you see I can move left and right with H and L, which helps for that situation. Another cool feature here is if I do super shift L, I can swap positions here. So if I want term one to be where term three is, I could do super shift L, because that's gonna be the right arrow. And if I want term one now to go down, I could do super shift J. So I can move this around with certain keybinds. Really cool feature here, so. And as we note here, we open up a new tag on tag two. Every new tag is gonna be opened with the tiling mode by default. So we have tag one that's in vertical grid mode, but tag two is just gonna be on tiling if you open it. So let's go ahead and test out the scrolling feature here. So we'll go to the horizontal scrolling layout now. And as you can see, super H goes left and super L goes right. We can scroll all the way. We can really go crazy with this. So if I go open another terminal here, that's gonna be terminal five. As you can see, we've got term one, two, three, two and three are actually backwards here. Let's fix that. One, two, three, four, five. That's the horizontal scroller. But we also have a vertical scroll here. So we can do super J, K to go through all these vertically. And this may not seem crazy, but what's crazy about this is that it works with gestures. So if you're on a laptop with a trackpad, you can just specify that you want three fingers to scroll up or down respectively, which is kind of cool. Let's go back to the grid mode here. So it, if you're used to a ThinkPad or if you're somebody who's coming over from Mac OS and you use the three finger swipe to go up, that'll normally bring you into an overview mode. So you can get to an overview mode here the same way if you're on a trackpad. But you can also specify that as a keybind. So I've got super zero that brings me to the overview mode. If I dare I say I want to use my mouse, I can just click on whatever I needed to get to. But toggle that back with super zero as well. And of course, we've got a lot of these other options here. The center tile, the classic right tile, the vertical scroll, the vertical tile, vertical grid. And this one is vertical K, which is basically the master is visible, but everything else is monocle. And K is just the horizontal variant of that. So everything else is monocle, but the main window is visible. So yeah, definitely a lot of different modes here to work with. And you can see there's gonna be a lot of playing around with this. But yeah, for my situation, I'm usually pretty good with just the tiling, but it's really cool to see Mango implementing these extra layouts here. And I highly recommend you play around with those. So one thing that Argos Nothing has really got me into is the combo view. And this is a feature from DWM. So let's say you have your config file here on tag one here, and then you open up tag two and you wanna open up C matrix. So I'm over here on tag one, but let's say I need everything on tag one and tag two to be visible. You just hold super and then press one and hold one and then press two. So now you've got tags one and two on one screen here and you can traverse them as needed. And then if I wanna go back to tag two, let's go tag two, tag one. See, now we're on tag one, two, and three. So if we open something here, well, where does that end up, right? Well, it's actually on one, it's on two, and it's on three. So interesting feature here, the combo view. And yeah, I definitely have played around with this and I found use cases for it. I think it's pretty cool, but yeah. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of my way bar options here. So how this works is these tags up here are actually workspaces. And in Waybar's config, usually for something like Hyperland, you're gonna use Hyperland workspaces. But on Mango, you're gonna to have to use something called EXT workspaces, which is what I've got here. And I've got it set to ignore hidden equals false. Now, obviously, if you wanted to see what that would look like otherwise, we'll go ahead and set that to true right now and then reload Waybar. It's just gonna show you only what you have visible. So I don't have anything on tag two through nine. So those are considered hidden. So you're not gonna see them, right? I personally like this to be false. And I like to use my indication method here where the hidden tags are just white. And if there's something on the hidden tag, it'll be cyan. So you know there's something on there. So let's go ahead and implement a quick screenshot script. It's gonna be a one line script here. Let's do snip.sh. 
that is going to be grim-l0-g. We're going to pass in the geometry of slurp and we're going to pipe that into wl copy. And we'll go ahead and bind that to super s here. We'll go ahead and spawn with the absolute path. Go ahead and reload our config. And now we should be able to take a screenshot here. And there we go. So now we've accessed the screenshots. So the world is your oyster yet again here because I barely scratched the surface of what Mango WC can offer for you. But I definitely encourage you to install it, configure it and start messing with it because I think if you tweak it to your liking, it could be a full on replacement for whatever current Wayland compositor you're using. And if you're coming over from DWM on the X org side of things, this is gonna be something that will be friendly towards you. And that's gonna be it for today's video. If you have any questions or recommendations on any other Linux related content, as usual, just drop a comment and it would not be a proper ending without an obligatory NeoFetch.